the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. A family friend tells the Daily Beast, Everyone in the family completely accepts that Harry is a private citizen and can do what he likes without reference to the family. That doesn't mean they have to like it. Of course, they are massively irritated by the prospect of more blockbuster Harry trials, but they have been expecting it. There is also the defamation case against the male, don't forget. Their goal is just to keep plugging away and not get distracted by any of it. The Beast adds the prospect of legal cases stretching into the event horizon is likely to be particularly annoying to Charles and William, who are reportedly keen to make the next few years all about burnishing the royal brand on the international stage as part of an effort to stop the breakup of the Commonwealth. The royals are thought to be keen to make maximum use of Charles and Camilla's good health to get them to make frequent overseas trips especially to farther-flung destinations, which have not been visited by the reigning monarch since the late Queen gave up long-haul travel in 2013. As a source told The Sun, there is a bit of a feeling Harry is spiralling out of control and all is not well. Members of his family are worried about how he is coping and his determination to keep having legal battles. Everything in the garden is not rosy, and now the prince has had his high court evidence publicly pulled apart in a humiliating fashion. A friend of the king's told the Daily Beast that the king would not give a second's thought to Harry's litigation timetable when making his plans for overseas travel for the next two years. Harry's invited to come visit his dad for the summer, maybe, Rebecca English writes for the Daily Mail. All family members, I am told, are expected to stay at some point over the next few weeks. That is, except for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, whose open invitation to join family gatherings hasn't exactly been rescinded, but is certainly not expected to be accepted. Relations between father and son, I understand, are still not good, although the family feel encouraged by claims that Harry and Meghan are now determined to focus on the future rather than family recriminations. A source says, if true, that can only be a good thing and may offer a sliver of hope that at some point in the future, personal relationships can be rebuilt. It's been a very visibly challenging year when it comes to the Sussexes. A source adds, you can read the room on that as to where things are. It's sad, but it is what it is. This is a family as well as an institution. Royal author Robert Jobson says not to expect the Sussexes. They have been given an open invite to join family gatherings by the palace, but no personal olive branch has been extended by the king for the summer getaway. There is not much dialogue, if any, between the king and his second son, an insider told me. Jobson wonders what the late and great Elizabeth II would have made of it all. As her final evening at Balmoral drew to a close, she spoke about finding peace and pleasure in the serene highland surroundings. She displayed her trademark wit, too, playfully joking about sending her guest, the Right Reverend Dr. Ian Greenshields, and then moderator of the Church of Scotland, to the tower because his room was in the turreted castle's tower. Perhaps if there is contact made between the king and his second son, his majesty can save that room and try that gag for Harry. Paul Dudridge, producer and entertainment coach, believes the Hollywood strikes provide Harry and Meghan with an opportunity to reset. Harry and Meghan may yet turn out to be the beneficiaries of the strike. It will give them a much-needed chance to review their creative strategies while using the industry shutdown as cover. Paul said the strike gives them an opportunity to regroup and retool their operations. Harry and Meghan need to flip the narrative. They have seemingly worn out the goodwill of the royal family and have not set the world alight with their creative output in the U.S. They are now well-positioned to salvage their image with a critical success in the creative sphere. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Hi, I'm Mark Francis and host of a new podcast, The Messy Effect. Join us as we take you into the exciting new world of Argentine soccer phenomenon, Lionel Messi. And his new life at Inter Miami will bring you into the glitz, the glamour, the star-studded events, along with the exciting journey to a new world of U.S. soccer and international football with news and stories three times a week. Come along for the ride as Messi, Miami and Major League Soccer experience the journey of a lifetime. Get the Messi effect wherever you get your podcasts. The Mirror went morbid and wondered what would happen to Camilla if Charles were to die. She would become the Queen Dowager. We learned that the royal title was first used by Queen Adelaide, who outlived King William for another 12 years. All the couple's children died in infancy, and the crown passed to William's niece, 
Queen Victoria. William surprised some folks by flipping burgers. Town and Country recaps the future king joining YouTubers from Channel Sorted Food in serving Earthshot burgers inspired by the inventions of three recent prize winners. Taking their creations to Bermondesey, London, in a food truck, the team filmed surprise customers as the prince handed over their food and explained to them what the Earthshot is all about. The sorted food team used vegetables grown in a greenhouse in a box by company Katie, which they cooked on a mukuru clean stove and served in packaging made by Notpa. The result was a lightly spiced plant-based burger, which was given positive reviews by the Crown. One muncher said, The burger was so good, we loved the burger. Another added, Of all the things I was expecting, it was not that. They were talking about the prince, not the burger. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please head on over to youtube.com and search for Palace Intrigue. You don't have to listen to the show over there. Just hit that subscribe button for us. We're on a mission to get a 1,000 subscribers, and every little bit you can do will help us immensely. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue, and good times. Hi, I'm Mark Francis and host of a new podcast, The Messy Effect. Join us as we take you into the exciting new world of Argentine soccer phenomenon, Lionel Messi. And his new life at Inter Miami will bring you into the glitz, the glamour, the star-studded events, along with the exciting journey to a new world of U.S. soccer and international football with news and stories three times a week. Come along for the ride as Messi, Miami and Major League Soccer experience the journey of a lifetime. Get the Messi effect wherever you get your podcasts.